He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the beggar from the ash heap to set them among princes and make them inherit the throne of glory. 1 Samuel 2, 8a We are a people called by God to positively impact and influence our generation. We are a living spring to a thirsty world, a place where imperfect people find true joy, genuine friendship, and practical truth for living from the Bible. In the preceding year, we run through a troop. We were confronted with challenges of a lifetime. Our resolve in God was tested. However, this year, we are leaping over walls. God is bringing His promises to pass. We are transitioning from divine acceleration to a season of divine upliftment. What the enemy meant for evil, God is turning around for good. There will be divine upliftment in our church, families, careers, financial status, jobs, and in every aspect of our lives. God is lifting us to a level we never envisioned. We will no longer operate in the valley. There will be divine upliftment, a place where eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has it entered into the heart of men. God is divinely lifting you to a place where you are a success, not a failure, a place where you are a victor, not a victim, a winner, not a loser, a place where you are not sinking, but soaring, a place where you are not defeated, but destined to rise higher. Because of the favor of God, protocols will be broken for your upliftment. You are ripened to enjoy divine recognition. You will rise above your equals. 2021, our season of divine upliftment. Get ready for the Word of God as we welcome our guest speaker. We want to read um, 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 1 to 11. Please open your Bibles to 1 Samuel chapter 1 and be on your feet as the custom is in the house. Let's give honor unto God in the reading of God's Word. And I read from the New King James Version. Okay. Bear with me, I can't see the screen, so I'm going to try here. Now there was a certain man of Ramathiam Zophred of the mountains of Ephraim, and his name was Ekana, the son of Jehor. Jehoram, the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, and the son of Zophar, an Ephraimite, and he had two wives. The name of one was Hannah, and the, the name of the other, Penina. Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. This man went up from his city yearly to worship and sacrifice to the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, the, the priest of the Lord, Hophni and Phinehas, the priest of the Lord, were there. Thank you. And whenever the time came for Elkanah to make an offering, he would give portions to Penina his wife, and to all her sons and daughters. But to Hannah, he would give a double portion, for he loved Hannah. Although the Lord had, had closed her womb, and her rival also provoked her severely to make her miserable. Miserable, because the Lord had closed her womb. So it was year by year. When she went up to the house of the Lord, that she provoked her, therefore she wept and did not eat. Then Elkanah, her husband, said to her, Hannah, why do you weep? Why do you not eat? And why is your heart grieved? Am I not better to you than ten sons? So Hannah arose after he had finished eating and drinking in Shiloh. Now Eli, the high priest, was sitting on the seat 
by the doorpost of the tabernacle of the Lord. Am I on course? Okay. Of the tabernacle of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed to the Lord and wept in anguish. Then she said, she made a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your maid servant and remember me and not forget your maid servant, but will give your maid servant a male child, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life and no razor shall come upon his head. Amen. Father, we want to bless your name this uh, morning. We give you praise for your word. Father, I stand in need of your grace, in need of your mercy, in need of you, O oh Lord. I have none except that which you gave me. And so, dear Lord Jesus, do what you do best. Use me for your glory and let your word come forth with power, with clarity, with meaning. And let it fall on the fertile grounds today. And let your word do its work in the lives of your children. That your word, my Lord, that will be fruitful in the life of your children. And, and will be, be indeed uplifted to the glory of your name. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Take all the glory and all the honor in the name of Jesus, the Christ. Pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. So year by year, Hannah goes to Shiloh. Principles of receiving your Samuel. We see Hannah has to do a lot of things. She has to go through things. She didn't just got up one day. And then praise God for Samuel. Samuel didn't just, you know, came in. For some of us, one touch, you know, and boom, we are done. The next one, boom, and then we keep on producing. If God had not been merciful to some of us, maybe now, I don't know how many we'll be carrying around here. But praise be to God. Amen. It wasn't so for Hannah. It wasn't anything of her fault. It wasn't any of her fault. Some way, somehow, the Lord closed her womb. And that became a problem for her. And not so much that, you know, she wanted that problem. It's not like, you know, you know it was a big deal. But somebody decided to make it a big deal. Somebody to, decided to make it a big deal for her. And so year by year, they have to go to the house of the Lord. You see, there was something at stake in here. Bible doesn't, you know, necessarily point it out and say, but if you look at this, you come to the house of God year by year. Can you imagine living in a house with somebody? She's very fine with you. And this is her rival, all married to one man. But they were fine at home, you see. Nothing was happening except when they go to the house of the Lord. And so each year, they go. And Penina doesn't, you know, of course, disappoint. He gives it to her. She makes sure she provoke her. She made her life miserable. And so these things became a roadblock in her life. And so it is in this journey of life, there are a few roadblocks that can affect our progress, you and I, in life. We want to look at few things and the journey of Hannah took to receive her Samuel. By the end of today, it is my prayer and my belief and hope that we can glean few things, pointers from what she did and implement it in our lives. So if we look at the passage we just read, you see, year by year, they go to Shiloh and Hannah, I mean, and Penina do her numbers to her. And so, let's say they've come this year. She does her things and then they go home. And lo and behold, you know, nothing happens. So then they go about their business. Everything is fine at home. Pena and her children are walking around playing and doing her thing. She doesn't have any. But there is no provocation at home. There is no um, talking back at home. There is no um, say, hey, you don't have children. I have children. You know, there, there is nothing of that. 
And so you see, um, Hannah will be sitting there thinking, okay, now it's time to prepare to go to Shiloh again. A year has come. She could have said, oh, you know what? Let me just sit home this time around because you know what? I'm happy at home. Home, there is peace in the house. There is no chaos. Pena doesn't rub her children on my face. But the moment I step into the house of God, that is when she display. And so she could have sat there and think about all these. It made her afraid. There is fear at stake in here. The fear of unknown. The fear of what Penina might do this time. Is she going to come at me again? And how is she even going to do it? At what point is she going to display? At what point is she going to make my life miserable? Is she going to recruit more friends to look down on me? Is she going to recruit more friends? Somebody to come and sit right next to me and start checking me out. Is she going to um, um, recruit another one with a beautiful child and come sit next to me and the child is trying to play with me and I'm trying to play back and then the mother pulls the child away from me? Is she going to do that? All these things, you know, became a worry and there is a fear involved here. Okay, I don't know. The fear of unknowing, so then I'm not going. I'm just going to sit home. You see? And so today, but if she has sat home, you know what would have happened? She wouldn't have received her Samuel. Today, as we come, we are, as we, we sit here today, your Samuel is different from my Samuel. We all have different Samuels. Maybe your Samuel is, you know, receiving your degree, your PhD or your master's. Maybe your Samuel is getting married. Maybe your Samuel... Is trying to open your own business, to start your own business. Maybe your Samuel is traveling around the world. Maybe your Samuel is to write a book. Maybe your Samuel is to be, you know, in ministry. Maybe your Samuel is to write a song, to launch it, which our, um, our sister did it very beautifully um, last week. She went through the process. I'm sure at a point she was afraid. Sister June, God bless you. For the, for the CD, every woman, everyone, please buy one to support her ministry. She went through fear. She could have sat and said, oh, maybe my voice is not good enough. It won't come out well. It won't be this. It won't be that. People will not buy. I don't have enough money to launch it. So many things could have distracted her, but she pushed through it. And today, she's a songwriter. And she have an album to the glory of God. Push your hands together for Jesus. And so your Samuel is different from my Samuel. If Hannah had stayed home, it wouldn't have been good. And so before finding your Samuel, there are a few things, principles, that we should consider in order to pursue our Samuel, which we can glean from this. And that brings me to my first point. Do it afraid. Do it even when you are afraid. What is it preventing you from getting that degree? What is it preventing you, you know, from getting married? Maybe you've been in one before and it was terrible. Maybe you experienced some pain in your first one. Maybe you saw your parents, the way their marriage was, and you said in your heart, no, this one I don't want. And so all these things are blocking you. So um, I have written here that fear, okay, Fear is a torment. Fear can prevent us from moving forward. Fear is the devil's favorite weapon in the toolbox of schemes. He uses to destroy God's good plan for us. He uses it to hold us back and prevent progress in our relationships, our career, and our ability to live the best life. Fear is also false evidence appearing real. What is appearing real before you? What is appearing real? You feel the fear. It's an emotion. You feel it. The thing is there. You are afraid to, to go on the highway to drive. Not that you don't know how to drive, but you are afraid. It's a fear. Women, we sit in this house among us women. It's Mother's Day. We want to be empowered and to be encouraged to do the best we can for the kingdom of God. Amen. Because you know God has placed so much within you. But because of the fear of unknown, because of the fear of what this one might say, because of, you know, um, 
the fear of not good enough. We don't do that. And so when we say it is, so when we say fear, it is not every fear, okay, that is bad. There are some good kind of fear. And God placed that within us, and it's good for this life journey. Um, the fear of the Lord, it is good. The fear, you know, we fear fire. When we see fire, we know that if you go near the fire, if you touch it, if you go and put your hand in a fire, you will be burned. And so that kind of fear, it is good for us to have. It is good to know that you don't go and stand um, in the middle of the road, on the highway. Cars are coming from the left and right, and then you cross. The car, you know, you might be kicked and get injury or die. So it's a good fear that you don't do that. You know you can, you don't know how to swim. So you don't go and stand on a cliff and hide somewhere and say, I'm going to dive and somersault into this pool. You are going to drown. You don't know how to swim. And God forbid, if nobody is around to rescue you, you will be dead. This kind of fear are necessary for us to have. It is there God plays it within us, okay, to protect us from getting hurt or harm. But there is the other kind of fear that doesn't come from God. It comes from the enemy if it doesn't come from God. But God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of sound mind. And that is our portion. Amen? And so... That bad kind of fear, it is the fear that prevents you and I from moving forward in life. This fear, this bad kind of fear prevents us from becoming what God has predestined for us. This kind of fear, it is the one that stops us from achieving our goals. It stops us from achieving our dreams. It is the kind of fear that stops us from embarking on something new. The fear of making mistakes. The fear of what might happen tomorrow. What might happen tomorrow. It is a big fear. We don't know. We don't know that we're going to wake up one day and here is corona. We have no idea. It is fear and it's still, you know, lingering around us. But today I pray that God will help us overcome it in the name of Jesus. The fear of not good enough, the fear of inadequacy, the fear of what if, the fear of unknown, the fear of talked about, and so many others. And these things were present in the life of Hannah. She was afraid. If you look at what was happening in the house of God, from her very own home, Penina, she was afraid because she didn't know how she was going to do it this time. She had no idea. And this fear is not real. It is an emotion and doesn't come from God. Because, of course, God has not given us the spirit of fear. Amen. And that is 2 Timothy 1, 7. And so over the years, you see, the devil has used this fear to destroy us. It has prevented many. And maybe you can testify it has prevented you because of fear for moving forward, from getting that degree, because you think you are a mother, I am a wife, I have a job, you know, I have children to take care of. So it is very hard. You see all these things and it prevents you from moving forward. You think you are not good enough. You are not sure if you can do it or not. But God has encouraged us in his word. He said to Joshua before he sent me out, he sent him out. Joshua took the place of Moses, and God knew that there is a point in his time that he will be afraid. And so God went ahead of us and gave us the assurance, the assurance to not be afraid. The assurance to not be afraid, because you will feel fear when you decide to step and do the impossible. You will feel fear. It is all around us. I'm standing here right now. I'm very, very much afraid. You have no idea. I am so much afraid. You have no idea. But it's a feeling. I was more afraid sitting there until I was called and I took a step forward. 
I was still afraid, but it was a little bit less. And then I climbed one step. And then it was a little bit less. And I climbed one step. And then it became just a little bit less. And I climbed another step. And then you started clapping. And then I came up here. Though I'm afraid, but I'm still doing it afraid anyways. And trusting God that it will mean something to you. Trusting God that you too, when you live here, you will take the bold step and do what is necessary. Do not be afraid, but do it afraid anyways. Because the fear, the enemy will make sure that he will not leave us alone. When you decide in your head that you want to do this, all by yourself, nobody is with you. You will talk yourself out. Oh, I can't do this. Oh, I'm a woman. Nobody will listen to me. You see, we, 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 we talk ourselves down all the time. Did you see how well Sister Helen was doing up here? But ask her if she wasn't afraid. She will tell you, amen? So please, women, let's keep on keeping on. Let's keep on keeping on. Let's keep on keeping on. Do not let fear stop you from coming into the house of the Lord. Kana could have said to herself, you know, I'm too much afraid. Because it's been years. Every year we go. Every year we go. Penina does not disappoint. She's going to embarrass me more. She's going to make my life miserable in the house of God. We come to the house of God to, to worship, to sacrifice, to praise our Lord. This is where we come to receive the blessings of God, to have our insanity, to have our peace. We come here to receive our healing. We come to the house of God uh, to, 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 to be uplifted and to face what is out there. And then we are home. You won't do anything. You wait for us to come to church. And this is where you want to come and disgrace me. In the house of God, I'm coming into the house of God with, 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 with something within me. I am trusting God that he will touch me. I am trusting God that he will hear my prayer and give me my Samuel. I am trusting God that I'll get my healing today. I am trusting God. And I know also that Penina is going to be there too. Because I saw her at home. When I was getting ready, she was getting ready too. When I picked up my suitcase, she picked up her suitcase also. And I was afraid. But guess what? Even though I am afraid, I am going to go anyway. I am going to go anyway. Even though you are afraid, don't stay home. Come anyways. Even though you are afraid that when you come and you get to this door, the one who doesn't like you is going to be the one who is going to greet you. Come anyways, even though you know that you've come to church with this same shoe every Sunday. And you know there is one sister who doesn't like you that much. She's going to look at you from your very top and come down and size you. You see it happen year by year, month by month, day after Sunday after Sunday. But please, don't sit home. Come anyways. Come anyways. Come anyways. If you want to receive your Samuel, don't sit home. Maybe your hair is not good enough, you know. Maybe your edges are not good enough like mine is most of the time. Maybe you don't have it all together with your colors. You know, women, we are very particular. Sometimes we feel like, oh, my dress, my dress. You know, I struggle to find a white dress to wear. I don't have much white. I struggle. You know, I struggle. I, don't, I can't count how many whites I have. And here we say, you know, put on some white. It's beautiful. I like it, but I don't have it. And I've gone through, up and down in the mall, trying to find something decent to wear today. It's Mother's Day, for Christ's sake. I want to look good. But it doesn't matter what I try. It doesn't look good on me. They are either too small, showing too much, you know, stuff that I don't want to show. Amen? It is, it, it's fearful. Somebody will say, what is fear in this? Oh, come try. Come into my skin and try. It is fearful to not have something decent to put on. Because you have closet full of clothes and yet nothing fit it doesn't matter what you do and yet nothing fit oh what are they going to say about me today oh look at her eh? look at her gaining weight and you know doesn't you know it's mother's they put something better on lady it is a free fearful thing and i'm going to come and stand here i'm like you know what white or no white hallelujah whether it looks good or not, that is not necessary because I want to receive my Samuel. 
I want to receive my Samuel. You don't have to have it all together, women. You don't have to have it all together to come to the house of God. Do not let anything stop you from coming to the house of God. You don't have to have all the makeup done very well. We don't know how. Some of us, we struggle, you know, we struggle. Serious struggle, we do struggle to combine the colors on our faces. But we come anyways. Please, women, come anyways. Don't let anything stop you. When the mascara gets into your eyes and half of your eye is red and some of your lashes are hanging somewhere, you know what? Don't let that keep you at home. Don't let that stop you from coming because we care so much about how we look and because of that, we stay home and we are missing our Samuels. Women of Christ Covenant Chapel, please do not worry about Chopinina. It doesn't matter what we do. They will be here whether we like it or not. They are in the house. Do not let any Penina stop you from coming to the house of God. Do it anyway. Come anyway. Your hair might be as bad. Come anyway. Your dress doesn't look good. But come anyways. Your children might be crying in the midst of the service. Don't leave them at home. Bring them anyways. Come anyways. You were afraid, but do it anyways, women. Don't let anything stop us. Let nothing stop you. Not the way you look, not what somebody is going to say. If you have sat home, you know, Sana could have said, you know what, it is better for me to be at home. And so I'm going to put myself in isolation, which most of us we do. You know what you did, and you know who knows what you did. You are so afraid of what that person is going to tell that person. You know what you did, and you know who knows, and it's very fearful thing. It bothers us so much what somebody is going to say about us. And because of this, women especially, we sit home. We put ourselves in isolation, and we cry ourselves to sleep. May God deliver us from this in the name of Jesus. May God deliver us from this. Keep coming. If Hannah had put herself in isolation and stayed home, guess what? Where would have been Samuel today? Where would have been Samuel today? Where would have been Samuel today? If you had stayed home, the day that you didn't feel good, you thought you were not looking so good, and that day you walked in here, and guess what happened? Some way, somehow, God touched you in a whole different way. And you know, you can testify that your life has never been the same. But that was the day that you didn't want to come to church. So when you wake up and you feel, you know, it's a feeling. You feel, you know, it's a feeling. You feel like, oh, today I'm going to stay home. Which we do feel every day, women. Because our emotions are all over. Every day it's a whole different thing. We feel it. Please anyway if you really want to receive your Samuel <clears throat> thank you I'm afraid just so you know but I'm doing afraid anyways hallelujah because you know the race it's yours to run your race, it's only your race to run. Run it at your pace. Let no doubt stop you. Put every doubt behind you. Put every doubt behind you. And um, don't let your mistakes hinder you from getting your someone. Because we don't have it all together. We got mistakes. Big, mochi ones. But don't let those stop you from getting your someone. We also see that Hannah... In the midst of all this fear, confusion, you know, she took courage. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. But be strong and courageous. It takes courage to do what Hannah did. It takes courage. So after living a life of fear, finally, Hannah decided to embrace that fear. And to gain courage. You see? Courage is a quality. The quality shows by someone who decides to do something difficult or dangerous, even though they may be afraid. 
Even though you may be afraid, take the courage in the word of God. Embrace courage. God went ahead of us. He knew we would be afraid. He knew that we are not enough. You know, we, we will feel that. And he said, do not be afraid. Be strong and be courageous. Why? Because the Lord is with us. The Lord is with you, woman. The Lord is with us. Yes, we are afraid. But please, don't put that dream on hold. Do not put that dream on hold because you are afraid. Be courageous in the might of God and press forward. That position, a job, that big short position, the boss one, you know, take it. You have what it takes. Be courageous and take it. You know you have prepared yourself. You have, you have the degree. Take it. Don't be intimidated. Young um, ladies graduating from um, universities, getting out there. You know you have the courage. You have what it takes. You, you, you got it. Do not be afraid of, of, of the big shot, you know, the guys. Don't be intimidated. Do not be intimidated. Because they've been in the field for so long. Obviously, you know, they, are, they, they know. But you too, you know, deep down within you, be encouraged in the word of God. And know that God is with you. Go in, get that job, and do best to the glory of God. Do not push yourself down because you are a woman. You got it. Embrace courage in the word of God. And face your giant to get your Samuel. If you look at Exodus chapter number 2 verse 3. Go on. Moses' mother, Jochebed. A decree was made to kill all the male um, children in Israel. And here, Jochebed had just given birth. To a son. And so that child qualified to be dead. Because every child that was born, male children at that time, were put to death because of the degree that Pharaoh has given. But here is a mother, Jochebed. She looks at her son and says, This is a good child. This is a good child. And what did she do? A baby, mothers, you know your babies. You are feeding them, they are crying. You are changing their diaper, they are crying. You are um, um, giving them bath, they are crying. Every 30 minutes, they are crying. And so loud. Decree has been gone out. Every child, male, must die. And this woman decided that I will not let my children die, my son die. She made that decision. She took courage, courageous decision. And she hid Moses for three good months. How can you keep a baby for three months without having anybody know that you have a child in this house? It's a mystery. We will come to that one later. But she took courage that I will be courageous as a woman. I will not let my child, you know, um, be put to death. She hid the child for three months. And when she could hit him no more, she weave a basket courageously, a woman. Put the son in and went and put her on water. Can you imagine the fear that was going through her body? The fear, even keeping the child at home. If anybody had gone and, you know, um, 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 give her out, her life wouldn't have been spared. Of course, Moses would have been killed. And her life too. And who knows, maybe the whole um, household would have lost their life because of that courageous act. But she embraced courage in the word of God and said, my son is a good child. And so I will keep this child. And this child has not grown even for her to see that she is good. But mama perceived that this son is good. Mama perceived that this son is good. And so I will be courageous to save his life. And so she did. What are we saying about our children, women? Do you perceive that your child is good? Do you perceive that your child is good? She had not seen Moses, you know, grown to talk back or roll their eyes at or, or, or say, oh, you sent me too much. You see? 
Mama, give me this. Mama, give me that. Mama, do this. Mama, uh, mama. I be go do this, do that, you know. And they, they, they talk back, you know. They, 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 they roll their eyes and all that. But what do we say in the midst of all that? Please, perceive that your child is good. Say what you want to see in the life of your children. And indeed, they will become. Shape the destiny of your children. I'll get to that. And then they will become. Be courageous. Don't let anything stop you. Don't let the decree stop you. Don't let your human, womanhood. I'm a woman, so I can't, you know, I'm not qualified. Now you qualify because the finished work on Calvary. Today you qualify because of the finished work on Calvary. Jesus has come to make a way for you and I. So nothing stops you. Nothing stops you, a woman. Nothing stops you. Be the woman God has made you to be. Take the, 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 the big positions. Do the business. Do the ministry. Don't check in out. It's in you. God has placed it in you. You qualify and I qualify. And so let no fear stop you. Encourage yourself and keep on going. We see uh, in Mark 5, 25, the woman with the issue of blood. The woman with the issue of blood. That woman has bled for 12 good years. And has suffered many things in the life in the hands of physicians, only to grow worse. She has suffered many things in the hands of doctors, physicians. But you know, each time she go, she get worse and worse and worse. And she has spent all her money. Then she heard that Jesus was passing by. Hallelujah. Jesus is in our midst today. Amen. And she said in her heart that if I can only touch the hem of his garment, then I'll be made well. She said it in her heart. She said, if I can touch. She didn't say it and just sat there, you know. How many things have we said to ourselves? That, oh, this year I will do this. We begin the year. Um, this year, the divine upliftment. Um, I will get a degree. I will make sure I lose the weight. I will make sure I'm, um, I do well at home. I will make sure I, I, I change the way I talk to my children. I will make sure that I will get the business plan going. You know, there is things in your heart. You said you will pray more. You said you will say the word of God. You said you will make sure that every Wednesday you go on Bible studies. You said every Friday I'll go on a prayer network. You said to yourself, this year I'm going to be sure that I grow well in this spirit and we are in May and many of us we have chicken out we said it in our heart but we didn't put legs to our words and so we are not seeing our Samuel but this woman said if only I can touch the hem of his garment and I'll be made home you see the crowd all around Jesus and then you know this woman has bled for 12 months I mean yeah 12 months right 12 years she was anemic she was anemic. We, we get ours once, I mean, you know, once uh, in a month for maybe three, two, five, seven days. And some of us, you know, we are heavy bleeders. So we get weak. And you get dizzy. You get weak. And so in the midst of her weakness, in her dizziness, for 12 years, can you imagine? And she was unclean. Because if you read in Leviticus, if you were in that month, you are supposed to be put aside. She was unclean. She was not supposed to come close to, you know, people left alone close to Jesus, the Holy One. How can you bring your uncleanness, unclean as we are, to come and touch divinity? But she went through the crowd. She maneuvered herself. You know, maybe some people kicked her and then she fell because she was weak. And she might have crawled, you know, in the midst of the people. Figure out where Jesus was. Go through the protocol. Jesus with his um, disciples all over her. All over him. So she had to be courageous enough. She embraced courage and said, today be today. I will be made whole today. Are you willing to be whole today? Are you willing for Jesus to touch you and to be made whole today? When we come to the house of the Lord, 
message, the, the word of the Lord comes forth. Sometimes we are so afraid, we don't even want to get up to receive, you know, the word of God that is pronounced over us. We look so dignified, we think we got it all together. And so we sit so, de- you know, de- da, ma, ma. We, we sit so beautiful in our chair. We don't even want to get up and come to this altar and to claim what God is telling us. We sit there because, oh, I don't want to get up. Oh, I'm too shy. You know, we say we think we are shy. You know, you are not shy. You know you are not shy. But then we sit. Going forward, please embrace courage. When you are sitting there and the word of God hits you, if you want to jump, get up and jump. If you want to scream, get up and scream to receive uh, your blessing, to receive your Samuel. Don't sit there and shake it out. But this woman, get close to Jesus, and lo and behold, she touched the hem of his garment. And right then, she was made well. She felt something within her. And Jesus felt that power had come out of him. And he said, who touched me? Who touched me? Can you imagine the fear that the woman was feeling? She was trembling in her heart. Very fearful, afraid. And then she said, you know, of course the disciples said, ah, how can you say somebody touched you with all these people all pushing on each other? Everybody's touching us. How can you say somebody touched you? But power had gone out of Jesus. And so the woman said, with fear, she was afraid. But she responded anyways. And said, I, I touched you. And Jesus said, woman, your faith has made you well. Your faith, go and be healed of your affliction. Can you imagine if she had shut up, would she have been healed of her affliction? She wouldn't have. Women of Christ Covenant Chapel, mothers, women, daughters, please be courageous. Be courageous. Whatever that you have to do in the house of God, don't push yourself away. Be courageous. You can serve. If you can sing, please sing. If, you know, we call upon you women to do something, please don't, 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 don't talk yourself out of it. You have what it takes. Yes, we'll make mistakes. I don't know how many mistakes I've made standing here right now. We will make mistakes anyways. It's inevitable. Don't let that stop you. Be courageous and do what God has called you to do. It is a privilege and it's an honor to serve in the house of God. It is a privilege. It is an honor. Women, let us avail ourselves. Taking courage in the word of God and let us do great things for Jesus. Amen. Positive attitude and positive words. We see Hannah had positive attitude in what she did. Hannah could have given back to Penina if she wanted to. Am I right? You know what? Penina had the children, no doubt. But she had the love of her husband. She got double portion. She could have rubbed it in her face. Well, you have the children. I have the husband. I have a double portion. She she didn't have to, you know, use her money to to do anything for children. She could go to the mall and buy the best, the best um, um, red buttons, the best Gucci's, the best whatnot, all the designer ones. She could have done it all. I mean, I'm sure she had it. And she could have rubbed it on Hannah's face. But she did not do that because she had a good attitude. In the midst of all these chaos, what do you do? How do you respond to people? When they are talking back at you, look at her with all her children following her. Her children making noise in church. What is your attitude? How do you respond? Elkanah came to um, Hannah, her wife. Am I not more than ten sons to you, Hannah? Why do you cry? Why do you weep? Why do you not eat? Am I not more than ten sons? She looked at her. A couple months ago, that they did very beautiful sermon on it here. She looked at her, at her husband. She got up. They didn't say anything. And then what did she do? She went. And then she prayed. She could have, you know, give it to him. You know what I mean, women. We know how. What do you think you are? How can you be more than 10 sons? Knowing what you want, what you're looking for. Because purpose was calling her. She needed to bet her out for purpose. And she didn't misbehave in the midst of all that. 
she responded with grace, with good attitude. Women of Christ Covenant Chapel, let us have good attitude. Even when we know some, what somebody is doing, it's not good. Let us not pay evil back with evil, but instead let us pay evil with goodness and let us see what God will do with us. She could have gone home and give hell to the husband. Didn't you see Penayana mocking me at church? What did you do? You sat there, you watch her, you know, make me cry. You watch her, you know, talk about me. And you say you love me and you are giving me double portion. Yet you can't stand up for me and my husband. What will you do to your husband at home? Women. Aren't you supposed to be protecting me? Aren't you supposed to be the man in the house? Aren't you supposed to be putting her right? Don't, don't you know that I am the, 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 the senior wife in here? Don't you know what she did? Can't you see? What would you have done to your husband? You would have dressed him very well. There would have been no peace in your house, women. But minus us, in the name of Jesus, minus CCC women, minus CCC women, we, we are virtuous women. We deal with wisdom. From today, if you are like that, please make sure you bring peace in your house. Build your house with good attitude, with good words. Amen. The high priest also brought himself. Can you imagine the high priest? Let's put the husband one aside. Maybe the husband is not so much spiritual. But you, the high priest. Hey, in this house, who is our high priest now? You're supposed to see everything. God reveals. Eh? A new high priest now. <laughs> you see me in the altar praying. And you sit there and you come and accuse me. Put your drink, your drunkenness away, Hannah. Jesus, what would you have done? What would you have done, oh, women? And remember at this point, you were really in pain. You were so much in pain. You were distressed. As the Bible says, she was in distress, in agony, in pain. Pouring her heart out to God. She is praying, no words are coming, but her mouth is moving like a mad woman. Just going. The mouth is moving, the expressions are there. In anguish, in pain. And you high priest, this is the best you can do. The best you can do for me. Put your drunkness away. Who told you I am drunk? Who told you I am drunk? Did you see them, you know, the women sitting there drinking and playing and talking and partying? And, did you see me doing any of those? It's in, the, it's in the passage. Please read it. I don't have, my time is going. Amen. It's in there. Do you see me? But she responded. I'm trying to find what verse that is. She responded with grace. She gave honor to Eli. She didn't disrespect. You see, our words and our body languages, our attitude sometimes is things. It doesn't bring the glory of God in us. And these things prevent us from receiving our Samuel. These things prevent us from receiving our Samuel. When you are at the point of breakthrough, do not let your attitude and your words Stop you from receiving your Samuel. Don't let those things stop you from receiving your Samuel. Hannah responded with grace. Your handmaiden. I have not taken any drink. I'm trying to find that verse, please. Has not taken any drink. Um, I want to say this part well. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Uh, provoked her and Eli. Um, it, it's on the screen, huh? If I can, the verse. But Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord, I am a woman of sorrowful spirit. I have had, I have drank neither wine nor intoxicated drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. I haven't taken in any drink. 
but with a sorrowful heart, I have poured out my soul before the Lord. In humility, in honor to the high priest, even though she was accused wrongfully. It is true that she had none. She, he was accused by the high priest. By the high priest, amen. Let us respect and give honor to whom honor is due. Please. It doesn't matter. They are human, you know. They are human. They can only see and say what God reveals to them. Let us give respect to them. And she said, I haven't, but I have poured my heart to God. And Eli said, you know, be blessed. He prayed for her and may the Lord remember you. Lo and behold, she went home. She did not cry anymore. And guess what happened? The Lord remembered her. May it be unto us this morning in the name of Jesus. May the Lord remember you. May the Lord remember you. May the Lord remember you in the name of Jesus. Whatever is upon your heart, whatever your struggles are, whatever you are believing God for, whatever that you have poured unto God, may the Lord remember you. May the Lord remember you for to, to receive your Samuel. If she had responded bad, negatively, I don't think this would have been. Remember, she's been coming to Shiloh year by year, year by year, praying. Until this time, there is power that God has given to our high priest, the ones that, you know, watch over our souls. He released that unto her. And lo and behold, the Lord remembered her. Do not let anything keep you away from receiving your Samuel. Not even your own stinky attitudes. Not even your own words. Use your words well. Amen. Your words. Your words. You know, um, Jochebed said, this child is beautiful. This child is beautiful. She determined the future of her son, Moses. A mother. Mama. This child is beautiful. Her own words. And because of that, she did what she did. Please, say positive things over your children. Say what you want to see them become. And they will be in the name of Jesus. Be your, your children the first cheerleaders. Encourage your children with your words. Don't tear them down. Encourage your husbands, your, the men in your life, with your words. And don't tear them down. Don't tear them down. Build them up. And you will see what you said come into pass. Because our words are spirit. They make us and they unmake us. It's on your tongue. The power is on your tongue. Let us use it wisely. You know, wisely. Amen. And then we will see what God will do. <sighs> and say, I love you too. <laughs> Amen. Now my point number four. Turn your worries into prayer. Amen. Turn your worries into prayer. All like Rachel. You know Rachel? She went to the husband Jacob and said, give me children. Your husband can give you children. Your husbands can give you children except God. It is God that gives them the seed to give unto us for us to carry. Except God. And so at this point in Hannah's time, she realized that it is only God who can solve the problem. It is only God. And so instead of going about telling everybody about what Payana was doing, she could have gone and said, oh, can you imagine what Payana did to me today? Today that she made it worse, so I wasn't even expecting that one. Hey, today, Payana, she made it worse. Eh? She even got more friends to help her. She really made me cry. What Panana is doing, I don't even understand. And my husband is not even saying anything about it. My husband is not helping either. She doesn't say anything to, and she keep on doing it year after year, year after year. She could have complained. She could have do all that she wanted. She could have get friends to, to help her rub it on her face, you know. But in anguish, in pain, she went to the right source. She went on her knees. This is the end, I believe. 